kind of surprised myself. I got into management so quickly. I was playing up until last year, really enjoying my hurling. Uh, took a bit of break the early part of the year. Came back, was really enjoying it. Heading off during the summer days to play challenge games, uh, you know, uh, all county leagues in Kilkenny. And then I went off to play a match one evening. I was up to scoring four or five points from play. Felt really good and just did a bad twist again in my knee. And I remember sitting at home that night going in to my wife and saying, oh my God, I can't believe this again because I knew I'd done something bad. But I thought I'd done my cruise it didn't transpire that that was the way. But I kind of got back for the championship, but wasn't really back. My knee was still at me. And I just said, come the end, we lost the county semi-final. I said, look, that's it for me. I just, I couldn't do it again. As much as I enjoyed it and loved the buzz of playing, I just couldn't go back and get injured again and, and just go through all that turmoil of getting surgery and stuff like that. So, so I decided then I was just going to take it easy and our current management team uh, last year, Andy Maloney and Colin Bonner, um, they decided that they, they were pulling out. So there was a vacancy and the club chairman come to visit me one night um, and he, he didn't know what way to approach, asking me, that look, you're finished, so will you think about doing the management team? But he just asked me, would I, would I be interested? And I suppose I reflected at home and I could have went off somewhere else. I could have went to some other county. But I suppose I always envisioned at some stage training my own club. You know, the GA is all about your community. So what better way to start out you know, management than with your own? So far, I have enjoyed it because I'm not able to play anymore. So I think the next best thing, obviously I'm sitting in the studio talking about it, but I think the closest thing you can get to it is managing. So uh, I'd be very interested to see how it does progress. And I said, I have a steep learning curve, you know, I'm very young, very inexperienced. So, and I didn't even, I probably would have liked to have done a bit of coaching before going into the management side of it. But look, that was just the way it transpired. Uh, it's been, we sit here today, the first day of May, we've just finished, uh, you know, club month per se where we played one match in the whole month month of, of April so it's been frustrating in that sense you know because you want to be playing you want to be coaching you want to be you know encouraging players seeing getting better but what I've done I suppose with the weather we've had the first three or four months of the year I've been cancelling fields looking for challenge gatches sorting out referees getting physio so uh, I haven't really got to the coaching side of it as of yet but uh, it's something that I suppose I always kind of in the last couple of years I was looking forward to maybe seeing how it went and uh, that's where we are now. I'm involved in management at the moment. There's no magic to it. It's just getting the small things right. And you think about Brian Cody, what he did this year. He basically identified we need to hit the ground running. Like mm -hmm. Kilkenny, they would always said all these teams the past take it easy and build yourself up over the year as it goes on. I think Kenny was in a different space this year. He needed to get that bit of confidence back into the players. It obviously didn't work out very well because they lost to Cork and Clare in the first two matches, but I think they had enough in their tank from the training they had done that they finished the league very, very strongly. And, uh, you know, I think that was a very, very smart move out of Brian because now everyone, you know, after the first round or second round of the league was questioning them. Now they're talking about, geez, Kenny could win the All Ireland this year. And I think that's the whole, that's the, the mastery of Brian, is that he can do something that's so simple. He got the lads back, he trained them very hard, yet here they are now, confidence, no issues, you know, uh, which was something we always had. We always had that belief. And for anything to be a winner, I think you need to have that belief, you know. He'd be more traditional and would have let the players look after themselves. He would have helped us with his few words. And it's amazing what his few words could do for you because he could come in after training session and she'd say, you're flying it. Now, you might be flying it, you might have been coming back from an injury, but it's amazing, those couple of words, that was Brian's psychology of it, and he had a great way of doing that with various different players. And, you know, everyone looked up to him with such respect and such awe that when you do hear words like that from someone, it does lift you. There was a couple of things that I feel, just a savage group of players, you know, very, uh, very focused individuals, very wanted to get the best out of themselves, they pushed themselves, like it's all these buzzwords, but we just had a good group. Obviously we had a serious management team as well and, and Brian was leading that, so he was pushing us all to get better and that, that was it. And I said, those, in, those matches, you know, there was a bit of mystique around them, but that was it, it was just high intensity. You know, Brian didn't blow the whistle, so you know, even though you might have been fouled, you didn't get it free. And you know yourself, look, and Brian would come back and say to the defender, say to Tommy or JJ or Jackie, 
look, you won't be getting away with that in a championship match. So I think the lads realised it as well, they, they couldn't do it. <laughs> Obviously in the championship matches they pushed the board sometimes as well. But that just made it so intense because it was just, just 100 miles per hour, you know, it was just flying up and down the field and, and everyone was pushing themselves. And, and we had such depth in the panel as well. There was players that obviously weren't playing, they would have probably been playing in every other inter-county team at the time. So, so I think it just married itself. And, and behind it all, we just, like, someone like Tommy Welch, you, you hear him talking in, in the media, you know, currently, and you can just sense, what, what do you sense from him? He just fucking loves it, you know, he just mm -hmm. loves hurling. And that was, that was it, we had so many fellas just like that, and uh, you know, that's what made those, those sessions so, so special, I think. You know, in the inter-county scene, we might play, say, Cork or Tipperary maybe two or three times over a year, max. But like, in Kilkenny training, you could train maybe 60 or 70 hurling sessions. So like, of course, you know, you could come up against Tommy Welch or JJ Delaney fucking 30 or 40 times in a year. So like, they were my, by far, those two lads were just, you know, the hardest opponents ever met. But inter-county scene then, like, Jesus, like, you know, like Sean Oak is probably one of the toughest, and especially from that early point, he was really in his prime then. He was very, very difficult man to mark, so he would definitely be one of the most difficult opponents. You know, you're part of a team environment, and, and without that team, I wouldn't have been as successful as I am. Again, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of yourself without those lads. So it's very much, you know, the jersey, it's, we've always said it, you're handing it over to the next player. And that's, that's the culture of, you know, an amateur sport, is that it's where you're from, where you belong, and you just pass it to the next generation. And premiership is different, you know, someone that comes in, wave the checkbook, in he comes, out he goes. So um, I think that's the beauty of the GA. Yeah, I wouldn't agree I was at the peak of my powers because I was, I was 33 years of age, you know, like it was, I'd gone through a very traumatic 2012, um, you know, I'd done my cruise in 10, I came back and felt I'd finished 11 very strong, and next thing then I get a shoulder injury in a county semi-final, it gives me hardship for six months, like, you know, tr three days before the opening Leinster final, I went down for a few pucks and I had a stinger in my shoulder, I could barely strike the ball. Like, and then, as I said, the, the year transpired, I said I, I had three years of constant injury, so I didn't feel like it was the peak of my powers yet, you know, as the, as the season went on, as I started to work with brother Damien uh, Brennan, who just worked on my mentality and my, my, my psych, uh, you know, my head and just what way I felt. I suppose I really enjoyed it and finished the year very, very strongly, so, um, but then obviously that was the first time where, you know, I had nine or eleven medals, I'd equaled the record. So there was a lot of media that went with it. So it was just amazing, you know, it was an amazing time. Um, there was just something different about 2012. Maybe it was because of the injuries and what I came from uh, and the work I was doing with, with, with Brother Damien that I was really able to enjoy it and just really, I suppose, soak it up that this was just amazing things that were, were happening to myself. So. So in that sense, it was. Uh, did it bring pressure? I think in the previous few years, it would have brought pressure. But as I said, I'd really realised then, I'd just be myself. And, and I think when you're yourself, um, you know, that's when you enjoy it a lot more. Um, previous few years, I was worried, I was concerned of living up to the hype of, of doing this or doing that. And I remember playing in one of the All Irelands in 2010 where you know, I couldn't basically sleep. My legs were gone to shot uh, because of the pressures I was putting on myself. And, um, you know, it was serious stress, but it was not major, it was sport. But I didn't see it like that. I thought this was the most important thing in life. And I had to perform and I had to live up to all these people that were outside. So, you know, it differs. And now it's lovely to hear that and truly honored because I didn't think from my days in Ballyhale or my days in Cairns that you'd hear those kind of things. But you do, you know, and I suppose when you hear from people, your peers that play the game, you absolutely, you're, you're, you're very honored. Uh, some of the other stuff then, not really, just water off a duck's back kind of job, you know. The last year, my last year there, going to transition from a player to being a sub. So, like, that was mentally 
one of the toughest things I've ever had to deal with. And, and it was a great experience for me now as I head into management because, you know, I was the star player, the number one, you know, and next thing here I am, you know, 22, 23, on the, on, on the substitutes list, sitting in the stands, watching all this unfold, mad to be out there. It was a very frustrating year to the last year I was there. Um, now it was all worthwhile come the end of it because obviously we won, you get your 10th medal, you know, it's amazing finish, it's a great way to go out, but that was a very difficult year and, 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 and from a management point of view, I think I learned an awful lot in that year if I ever do go further with management because that whole transition for a player and it's very difficult, you know. Well, I remember, I suppose, the, the accident happened on May 23rd, it um, was a Monday evening, so uh, I remember the Wednesday morning, because we went to Crumlin and some of the rooms, uh, you know, there, there's not very much space up there, so they can be a bit claustrophobic, and I remember Deirdre coming in with the paper, and it was the front page, and, and how did I feel? I suppose my, my gut was I felt very angry, I was there like, why, you know, this is nothing to do with the front pages, you know, I was so used to being in the back pages. But I suppose, look, I you know, I wouldn't be sitting here without my profile. So after a bit of time and you reflect and you kind of understand that that does come with it, you know, if you're going to be on the Late Late Show, if you're going to be doing the Sunday game, if you're going to be doing all these nice things that people look in and watch and marvel at and you're going to be doing your commercial deals, you're going to expect that some media attention does come with it. It's, it's been a massive turning point in my personal life, to be honest, because I suppose, you know, your youth is very much dominated. For me, it was by hurling and my early sporting life. You know, it was all very much hurling and Kenny and winning all Ireland's. I suppose then your family come along and, and Deirdre was very good to me during that time. You know, my family was growing during that time uh, as we were winning all Ireland's. And I suppose I was only after stepping out of that scene and, you know, people would say, would you miss it? And, you know, what was going on? And, and would you love to be still there? Um, but I think I was very unfortunate, but very fortunate in the sense that, um, you know, I'm very fortunate that my, my little boy survived. Um, he's flying it now. He's running around playing hurling and, and football. Um, but look, it could have been so much different. You know, he lost four toes. If he'd lost his fifth toe, he mightn't be able to walk. So there, there was a lot, and, and it was just a very traumatic experience. You spend time in Crumlin, where you see a lot worse cases than yourself. Um, and, and I think it just gives you a reflection of life, of what is so much important, so what's so important is your family. And, and for me, you know, sport is brilliant. And even now, you know, that I'm managing the team, what sport is, it's, it's not, more than anything else, it's about enjoyment. You should just enjoy it, not to get caught up in the moments or anything like that. And and family is so, so important. We've lost, just currently, one of our lads in the panel, Owen Doyle, you know, was on my hurling panel, killed in a motor, motorcycle accident, 23 years of age. Like, it's just, life is just cruel, you know. So, so in that sense, you know, it was a defining moment and I think my personal life is so much better because of it because yes I have a lot going on and everything like that but at the end of the day what's most important is, is my family and enjoying them and, and not to be worried about you're going off doing the Sunday game you're going to be gone all day that's something that you should look forward to and very much cherish the moments you have and I think that really has happened because of that special little man and, and how he responded to the injury as well like he was just amazing it just taught me a lot you know.